and welcome back to another review me Kevin from Kevin Grant on Whiskey. This week we've got something I really enjoyed, one of the first expressions I've ever had. So I've been able to get my hands on one of the latest releases. This is the Arden Muchen ED04.2103. What I'm led to believe is this was the release from the 19th of January this year. This is when it was bottled. So it's been at the start of the year it's came out, so we're looking kind of over the winter period, maybe it's been aged and it bottled it early in the year. So nearly, if you look at it, a year old in a sense, it's been sitting here. One of the things is I picked this up in auction. I was on auctions, I was just looking about, I put a wee bid on of £35, thinking it's going to go for a lot more and I, I won it. Picked it up after paying a few fees, I didn't get it shipped to me. Overall, I paid £39. So I'm quite happy at that. As you can see, it's unopened. I'm going to open it right now and then we'll go through some of the history, some of the kind of cool things that Ardema can do. We'll let it sit in the glass and also give it some time to breathe and then we'll get straight into um, trying it. So let's even get a good pop. Yep. So we get in here. A nice healthy pour. So. Arnamuchan, Western Highlands. It's the most westerly distillery in Scotland, I believe. They're the first distillery to use blockchain technology. So in the back of each bottle, which I'll show you here, is a barcode. And you scan this on your phone, any device you've got, and it takes you straight to the website and straight to when everything was done, telling you from who bottled it. So someone called Kelly Combe made bottled this bottle. This is bottle 44 of 17,500, right about there. Um, so I've got low, low in the kind of chain of that. Concerto Barley from Broomhill Farm, and it's called the Brucefield, like the Brucefield Field, I think it is. So this is just all easily accessible by giving a quick scan. Also, they tell you the first waters is 64 uh, degrees Celsius, the next waters is 82. And then the third water is 91 degrees Celsius. So it's going through all these stages, giving us, say, the geek that really wants to know where it comes from without having to really do much. We move from that, they get their water as well. So the next thing you can find on this chain is they get their water from the Glenmore Spring. They add water in uh, at 75% ABV. The cask, they fill the cask at 63.5% ABV. And what else did they tell me? So, this was really cool. They've got a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet of where you can see what casts were used, how many were used, and the split. So this is 65% bourbon casks, 35% uh, sherry casks, 50% peated malt, 50% unpeated malt. The peated is 30 to 35 ppm. So I was able to find in this, they use a standard barrel. So this is American oak standard barrel, uh, hogshead. Then they go to the Spanish stuff. They go to PX, Spanish Oloroso, and American oak Oloroso. And then it gets bottled. So it's about 44 casks that are all married together to make this 65% bourbon, 35% sherry. We get it in non-shell filtered. We get it in natural colour, 46.8%. ABV. Everything is there. Yes, there's no age to it because they are a young distillery. 2014, it is a Delphi who's an independent bottle that own these guys and found out they're totally renewable. Everything's kind of good for the planet. They're one of the greenest distilleries out there. They're so remote as well that they do so much to regenerate and repower. It's fascinating. It's a place I love to go and spend a couple of days and just be there and see what's going on. Headquarters are in Fife, and that's where the um, most of the barley comes from as well, which I'm led to believe. So as you can see, it's been in the glass for a wee bit. We do sometimes get tough neck pours. We can get really great first uh, impressions with it. What I'm going to do is I'll take a wee drink of water. And I'm going to get into this just now. I'm going to nose it, see what we can get. It's a nice kind of amber colour. I remember my first expression experience. I can put a wee link in. I'll try to the first release that they done of this. I really enjoyed it. It was really good spirit for me. So we'll get this on the nose. It's 
is quite briny. I'd say maybe slightly malty to it as well. But there is a freshness to it. There's a clean, crisp note on there. Maybe orange peels or zest or tang. It does smell nice. Yeah, kind of coastal orange tang. So I think that's the freshest orange coming through. Maybe that's a more bourbon lead. I'm not getting as much sherry notes, which I thought I'd maybe get a little bit more, but that could come on the palate. Right, let's try this. Let's see what this Hardemuck in AD042103 is like. Sludge box. It's like, it's got a, what would I say, it's like a kind of golden syrup note to it, you know, when you sometimes you put it on your, your porridge, your oatmeal, that kind of golden syrup kind of thickness to it, that sweetness is there. There's a tiny bit of spice on the after to it, but nothing too prominent. It has a really nice balance of the bourbon to... The sherry notes, even though it's a 50-50 split of peat and not peaty, I don't get any sort of peat here. I know Highland peat can be completely different and where they're based, being so westernly, above Mull and the Peninsula, they're, they've got great growing peat bogs and everything and the water sources can be heavily peated as well, just as a natural, um, it's just natural, it's nothing that they do to it. So I was expecting maybe a bit, a bit of peat, but I'm not getting that just now. That could come later. That could, when the bottle goes down, I get to know it. It, it could come back. But it's fresh. That syrupy note, a little bit of spice. There's something else here, but I can't quite pin it. Golden syrup. Soft spices, fruity, like, it's like your tinned um, fruit salad, I would say. You know, you've got the kind of maraschino cherry in there. You've got, like, uh, your yellow melon, a um, wee bit of pear, but the syrup's there and that little bit of spice. It's very, very enjoyable for that first kind of experience taste of it. I'm going to add a little bit of water. I don't think it needs it, but it will just be good to see if this changes anything to it. I think we look at this, a lot of distilleries could probably take a huge look and think, okay, can we be, can we be transparent? I think some can't be. They've, they're so old, not in the sense that's a bad thing, but they've got the roots. They're that big. They're producing millions and millions of litres a year these guys are only producing thousands of litres a year that they're able to start this and continue it but i think for a kind of old school distillery which producing so much they would struggle because a lot of it, the transparency might not be there maybe if we seen in behind the scenes would we be surprised would we be annoyed but this is just a great thing for me. I love to know everything about what's in the bottle to where it's from. I even know who bottled my bottle. That's insane. That's like the fine detail that we've got. Where the barley's been growing. And everything. It's just wild. So I'm very happy with that. That's my kind of... The things that I like to know about whiskey. And it's so easy to find by just scanning. It's all I need to do. And I can sit and research it all. But to give you a spreadsheet of everything that's in there, the cast number, where it was, I think they're all stored up at um, Ardemuchen as well just now until they really branch out and they have to look at other places. But you're getting everything, all that fine detail. So a wee bit of water, hasn't really done anything on the nose. Still that slight coastal, which they've renowned themselves on that because it's getting battered off the Atlantic Sea. I think it's Atlantic.
it's very enjoyable. I said this before, I was actually talking to a friend yesterday, we were talking about newer distilleries, I'm working a class as a new distillery because the whiskey's out there, you've got Torrevey, you've got Rassi, you've got Nichnean, um, and others, but for me, the base, the base product, the the bread and butter of this is my style of whiskey, which I like. I think this kind of the first releases that they've brought out here are phenomenal, and I can only see what it's going to be like when it gets older and older. But they're bringing this to as young. They're bringing it to as a good ABV, transparent. They have been in the trade for years and years and years with the Delphi. They know what they're doing, and this is just a passion and a glass. So what I would sell that as passion and a glass. And I am sold, and I got this for less than forty pound. Someone's tried to flip this, and unfortunately, they've not done it. And I've been able to come along. So if you had bottle number forty four, I'm sorry, I didn't bid more, but I'm very, very happy. I've got this for less than forty pounds, but I probably would pay more. As you can see, I've just opened the bottle, so I'm going to sit back. I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to get to know a little bit more, and I'm really looking forward to this. Um, going down the glass, going down the bottle. I'll share this with people as well as I've always done. The first release I shared with everyone. So let me know in the comments below if you've ever tried this before. Any of the Arnamuck and do you have the same views? Do you have different views? Do you enjoy it? Do you not enjoy it? Um, it'll be good to hear from you. As I say, I always see everyone's comments. It's just so difficult to reply to them all. We work schedules and everything to sit there and try and get back to everyone. But I do see them um, and it's amazing to, to see everyone interacting. If you've already subscribed, thank you very much. Hit that like button as well. If you like this video, hit the wee bell. You'll see me do my weekly reviews. I'll do another one uh, next week. So every single Friday, I'll be uploading something. And I'm thinking about doing a wee live soon. I've got a wee idea just from yesterday, thinking about auction prices and how that works. So I might do a wee live uh, over a weekend coming up. So if I do, I'll put that out there and hopefully you can all be involved. But thank you everyone for tuning in today. And as always, I've been Kevin from Kevin Grant on Whiskey. Enjoy me next week. Let's talk whiskey. Slash.